Welcome to my YouTube channel which is titled Research Methods Class with Dr. Lydia Wabugo. In this class, we discuss everything social science research from understanding the research discipline, research philosophy, the elements of scientific research, and the methodologies of conducting research. In research methods, we have a book titled Research Methods, Theory and Practice. This book is accessible through the website where you can access the hard copy of the book or a downloadable PDF format of the book. In the same website, you are able to access all the courses which includes the free research methods course, IBM SPSS statistics course, M&E consultancy course which are available at a fee. Please find the links in the description. Welcome. Welcome to our class today where we are going to discuss the three subsections of chapter one. In our previous lesson, we have listed the 12 sections of chapter one and we have also discussed subsection 1.1 which is background to the study and subsection 1.2 which is statement of the problem. In today's lesson, we are going to discuss section 1.3 which is the purpose of the study, section 1.4 which is objectives of the study and 1.5 which is the research questions. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to discuss the method of stating the purpose of the study and to explain section 1.3, 1.4 and 1.5 of chapter 1 of the research proposal. We shall keep repeating that the structure we are discussing may differ based on your discipline and based on your institution. You remember we listed the 12 sections of the research proposal and we have discussed the first two in our previous lesson. So in today's lesson, we are discussing the three like they have been highlighted. So we start with subsection 1.3, which is the purpose of the study. The purpose of the study is a single statement or single sentence that explains what the study intends to achieve or accomplish. That is, what is the aim of carrying out the study? In many institutions, the purpose of the study is written as the general objective of the study because this is the aim of carrying out the study. Now, we have said that it should be a single statement or a single sentence because the purpose should be brief, concise, and clearly stated. And as you state the purpose, ensure that there is coherence between the title, the problem, and the purpose. And a study must only have one purpose because you're going to the field to solve a problem. So there is no way you can have more than one general objective of the research. For instance, assume you have a title like is shown, a comparative analysis of academic performance of Bachelor of Education Science, Distance and on-campus learners at the University of Nairobi, Kenya. Now, what is the purpose? The purpose stems from the title, and remember the title stemmed from the problem. And therefore, the purpose of this study is to compare the academic performance of the Bachelor of Education Science, distance, and on-campus learners at the University of Nairobi in Kenya. You can see that the purpose does not have many wordings because we are directly writing the purpose from the title which stemmed from the problem of the study. Then we look at the objectives of the study which is section 1.4. Objectives are the specific statements of what the research intends to do to achieve the purpose of the study. So what will the research do so that it can achieve the purpose? Objectives therefore provide a clear sense of purpose and direction 
and must show the relationship between two or more variables and this relationship is stemming from the title objectives should be stated clearly unambiguously and briefly and that is why we normally say that objectives should be smart specific measurable attainable realistic and time bound now since objectives must be measurable we therefore use active verbs to state them and we normally use words like to determine to assess to compare to explore to evaluate to create to differentiate to establish etc etc but please note based on the discipline there are some disciplines that will have other action verbs that they use for instance in mathematics which may not be listed among what we have uh, we have listed under these action verbs so that is why the objectives that you state must also align to your discipline but in social sciences most of what we use is what we have listed so please remember that when you are stating the objectives it is what the research intends to do to achieve the purpose it therefore means that you look at the purpose and of course because you had done preliminary literature review remember our research process once you identify the problem you need to conduct preliminary literature review you have come up with the variables of the study now those are the variables that you will use to state the objectives for instance to determine the relationship between learning environment and the academic performance of Bachelor of Education Science learners in distance and on campus mode of learning. So you can see the first variable that this researcher wants to investigate is the learning environment. That will be a comparative variable it is one of the variable he, uh, he or she will use to compare the academic performance the other one is to establish the relationship between demographic characteristics and the academic performance of the bachelor of education science learners in distance and on campus mode of learning again the comparative variable is demographic characteristics so but you can see the dependent variable is academic performance which is not changing across the variable the objectives that is why we said that an objective must show the relationship between one or more variables then we may also have a, an objective like to determine the influence of learning environment on the academic performance of bachelor of education science learners in distance and on campus mode of learning now when you look at objective one and three is there a difference and the answer is yes the first one is already telling us that a relationship will be established and it also tells us that the design the researcher will use will be correlational survey because you can only establish relationship by the use of correlation but in the third one the researcher may not establish the relationship they may determine the influence by just using descriptive statistics like we discussed under data analysis in our previous lesson so note that the way you state your objectives research questions it also determines the design you will select and the type of questions that you will have in your instrument then we look at research questions now research questions are investigative and these are the questions that the researcher would like answered by the research it means these are the questions that provide answers to the research problem when we say they are investigative we mean that they are not yes no question therefore the research questions must be in line with the title the problem the purpose and the objectives when the research questions are answered the objectives of the study are achieved and that is why some institutions will not allow their students to state the two of them they will either have only the research questions and hypotheses or only the objectives and the hypotheses. 
While stating the research questions, we use the following questioning terms. Again, it also depends on the discipline. But in social sciences, we mainly use what is when our problem is descriptive, how does when your problem is exploratory, and to what extent does when you already have a baseline where you want to use the baseline to determine the current affair. Now, please note that the questioning terms, again, they determine how you will ask the questions in your instrument. They also determine the design. Now, when you say what is and how does, the two of them would not be answered by the same research questions. So, how does is more deeper than when you say what is. Again, when you say to what extent, to what extent? One, it tells you that you may need to have scale questions in your instrument and you also need to have established a baseline in your background so that now when you analyze your data, you will compare the baseline with the extent to which your variable has changed so that you can say it has moved to this extent. Now, where both the research questions and objectives are to be stated, then the researcher should state his or her questions according to the order in which objectives are stated, meaning that each objective must have its corresponding question. For instance, what is the relationship between learning environment and the academic performance of the Bachelor of Education Science learners in distance and on-campus mode? What is the relationship between demographic characteristics and the academic performance of Bachelor of Education science learners in distance and on-campus mode of learning? Or, to what extent does learning environment influence the academic performance of Bachelor of Education science learners in distance and on-campus mode of learning? Then there is a question. Does learning environment influence the academic performance of Bachelor of Education science learners in distance and on-campus mode of learning? Is that a research question? And the answer is no. Why? When you say, does learning environment, that means it is a yes-no question. When you are asked, does X influence Y, your answer will either be yes or no. So this is not a research question, but it is a question of research. It means it is a question that should be in your instrument. But again, remember, even as we discussed the instrument in our previous lesson, we said you do not take your objective and it becomes a question of research. You must break it down using the indicators that you drew in your conceptual framework and that brings us to the end of our lesson where today we have discussed section 1.3 which is the purpose of the study 1.4 which is objectives of the study and 1.5 which is the research questions in our next lesson we are going to discuss section 1.6 which is on hypothesis but before then Make sure you visit the researchmethodsclass.com website where you can watch the full research methods course. You can also access other courses on SPSS and M&D consultancy. You are also able to book for consultation and you can also buy the research methods ebook. So see you in our next lesson as we talk about section 1.6 which is on hypothesis so do not forget to subscribe to this channel like and share with your friends and feel free to write and put any question that you have on the comment section